All right, it's a little bit early, but we thought, hey, everybody's here. You guys want to get started? Cool. Welcome to our 2022 clinics. My name's Jerry. I have to tell you that because I forgot my badge. It's in my truck. <laughs> the one that usually tows the trailer, so I change vehicles. I forget them. I might have to get another badge and put it in my other car. <laughs> okay, uh, we can start off with uh, Norm. An introduction to Tinkercad. Yeah, Tinkercad. And uh, I'm like Jerry, I forgot my name badge at home. So I'm Norm Bollinger, <laughs> for those who don't know. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Let me get over here. All right. Um, I've been playing around with uh, models and stuff and fixing things. And then one thing that's happened to me is that uh, I had gears in locomotives that wind up getting straight. And can you find a gear or an old locomotive to buy? Nah. USA might have some, but uh, Aristo and LGB and that, they, you don't have any. So that got me sent enough to, uh, well, I should make some 3D printed gears. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to design the darn thing in the first place. So what I did is I went into uh, the 3D world and computer-aided design and said, okay, what do I need to do? So my objective was to do 3D printing of objects that were train-oriented. And my project was to replace a drive gear in my uh, Challenger locomotive that was strict. And so my requirements for uh, learning how to do this were simple. Simple and easy. You had to be able to design uh, parts for a train. Uh, it has to produce files uh, that are usable for a 3D printer. And it has to have support. And so there's quite a bit of support and videos online using Google as well as from the manufacturer. And the biggest thing, it had to be free. I wasn't going to go out then. Next one. There are different uh, computer-aided design programs out there. And uh, John Engel, a couple of years ago, did a presentation on 3D printing. And he came up uh, with uh, different uh, programs that you can use. And But you can see they're, hard, they're basically hard to use, and they're expensive. OK. Next. He came across a couple that are relatively easy to use and basically free. One was Tinkercad, which is pretty popular, easy to use, free. And it's a good program to use, or try to use anyway, if you don't have any experience with uh, uh, computer-aided design activities. The other one is SketchUp, which is kind of popular, but I found that was a little bit harder to use for my purposes. Next. So I went ahead and uh, decided to use Tinkercad. Well, what was my project? Why? Well, this is the, uh, the project. Uh, there's strip gear, here's the, kind of like the gearbox, and there's the gear sitting right in there. And if you take a close-up of it, you can see one side of the gear, all the teeth are basically stripped off or worn off. And it's a gear that has uh, helical uh, gears, in other words, teeth, in other words, they're at an angle, about 14 degrees. Then there's a smaller gear right here, with just uh, straight teeth, that's this guy right here. And so there's the motor with the helical drive on it that interacts with this part of the uh, of the gear. And that's what stripped out. And of course, the locomotive won't go and it just sits there going round and round. Next. So uh, how to do how to do this? Well, first off, you can go to the Tinkercad, right? There's tinkercad.com. And it's a free program. It's on the website. All you do is type that in. And they'll ask you to set up your account, your name, and a few other things. So you can set up a account. And then you'll get a page. It may look like this or like this, but in either case, there's a you'll find a, uh, a uh, icon that says you can click on that menu and that'll give you additional things to do. Or if it comes up like this, there'll maybe a little ribbon on top. In either case, find learn. And when you click on learn, you're going to wind up with a page, and I'll show it to you, that has about 10 different simple movements that you can do uh, on Tinkercad, which will get you to design almost anything you want. And if you think you're good enough, you, can just, you just think, uh, go on a button that hits says, uh, tinker this, and it'll give you a brand new page, and you can start, quote, playing and designing. So this learn, if you hit the learn button, it brings up these 10 lessons. And this just is kind of an illustration of what they do. But they're basically lessons uh, that just say, you know, copy, paste, duplicate. That's a lot of those, just word, you know, uh, type things that you've done. Uh, repeat the trash, undo, group, ungroup, and that type of thing. So it's a, mostly it should be um, instructions that you already used on other programs. 
Thanks. So once you uh, log in with your uh, account, you can start on a button that says Start Tinkering. And when you hit that button, what comes up is a page that looks like this. It has a work plane. That's the grid. That's basically where you'll be doing your design. And it has uh, controls, and this is the copy, paste, repeat, duplicate, that type of stuff all the way through here. They'll come up with a name. It's always some weird name. So you can just delete that and put in your own name, design your own design name or whatever you want there. And then there's a lot of shapes, basic shapes. It's squares, worlds, uh, uh, pyramids, half shapes, uh, and they're solids and translucent. They're these things that basically make holes or, or cutouts. And there's also a thing up here called more shapes. And you click on that little button up there, and it'll give you a whole lot more of standard shapes that you can just uh, use. And what you do is you just take one of these shapes to start with. And you just take this, and you just drag it over to the work plane, and you can start working. Next. In my case here, I had to make two gears. One was a large gear with the, the helical teeth on it. And so when I drag over a cylinder, your cylinder will come over and it'll have um, little squares right here. And generally these uh, uh, shapes come up and they're uh, uh, dimensioned uh, like 20 by 20 by 20. And everything is in millimeters. So I would <laughs> encourage you to do your design dimensions in millimeters, not inches. Uh, there's a, uh, on the lower right hand corner, there's a thing called a snap grid. That controls the, uh, how much your, um, your design or your uh, arrow will move as you're designing. And it starts off at one millimeter uh, increments, and it goes all the way up to uh, uh, a tenth of a millimeter. And I always go up and use a tenth one because it always gives you much more uh, accuracy. So, uh, you take it now, go, go through your uh, one tenth millimeter. Then you select your design, drag the cylinder from the basic shapes, then use the squares, like these little squares here, and to resize it. And for my large gear, my, uh, the basic internal or core of the gear is uh, uh, 15 millimeter diameter, so that's it. Then it's four and a half millimeters thick. So I, I resize the solid cylinder to those dimensions. And if you really need to or want to, you can rotate and look at it from different views, different sizes top, bottom, or whatever. All you do is you right click on your mouse and you can use that to rotate this figure any way you want to look at it. Next. Okay, so I've got the core of the gear here. So then I took out a, uh, or made a, a second cylinder, pulled the second cylinder out, and I have to make teeth. So I resized that to four and a half millimeters thick, which is the thickness of that thing. And then I made one side one millimeter thick, wide, and then I made the other one five millimeters deep. So you wind up with an ellipse, basically, a solid ellipse. And you can rotate, then you can, there's a, a like a little compass up on top of these uh, solid, or these uh, objects. And you can rotate, and I rotated that 14 degrees, because it's a helical gear, so the gear teeth have to be on an angle. Okay? And then I made a second one, made two of them, and I'll show you why. And uh, so you just do the reproduce or duplicate command on the uh, above the work plane, and you can make yourself another one. And I just move them apart. Next. Okay, so uh, this is what I call a tooth bar. I'm not sure you really had to make it like this or do it this way, but what I did is, see where it's pointer here, I lost it. These are the two tilted elliptical teeth, and I just took a um, Solid square, again, just drag it over from the work plane, resize that to four and a half millimeters, basically high or thick, uh, and one and a half millimeters, or 50 millimeters long, and then, <coughs> excuse me, um, and then thin. So uh, what I did is put these two teeth that were uh, tilted with this bar, because I resized it right here, you can see I resized it from 15 to one and four and a half, and then I moved them, these teeth, into the bar and the designs are the objects. You can move one object inside another object. And so what I did is I just took one of these and just moved that basically halfway in to that bar, both sides. Then it comes up with looking something like this, where you have a bar and you have a tooth that's tilted on this side and a tooth that's tilted on that side. And again, you can just rotate this around uh, to get a better view of it when you're working on it. 
And then there's a command called group. When you get all these designs or these pieces together, go where you want them, you hit the, you basically highlight them all, <coughs> and then you hit the command called group, and that makes all those little pieces one piece. Okay? Next. So, now to add these teeth to the cylinder, to make the gear, you take the, that uh, bar tooth or whatever you want, like they called it, moved it over here to the uh, basic cylinder that I had, and then it looks like this. There's a uh, command on the, uh, <clears throat> on the bar up there that's called align. And what it does is you can align any piece to, any, to the, another piece and make it centered or height or whatever. And it looks like that when you move it over and you align it. And then there's a, a call, command called duplicate. Well, you can make a lot of duplicates of that, but there's also a duplicate and repeat command. And what that does is you can highlight basically this bar, piece right here. You hit the duplicate repeat command, and then you can move this bar, like, and I did it 15 degrees, because it's a 24 tooth a gear, so that's 15 degrees. So I rotated that 15 degrees, hit the duplicate repeat command, and what that'll do is it'll, it'll repeat that same movement that you did initially. So you keep hitting that duplicate repeat command and pretty soon you wind up with the gear. And then when you have it all done, all the way around, you hit the group thing and that makes this all these pieces, because there's 24 of these plus the one here, 25, it makes it all one piece when you do group. And if you didn't like it, you, there's a command that's called ungroup. You can start over again and do whatever you want. Okay, next. Okay, that's the big gear. Now I asked to make a small gear. So I used the same process. Took the cylinder, resize it to the smaller diameter and thickness. And then I got another cylinder. But this time, instead of making a bar, this is small enough here, I just took and made this elongated, made it 11 millimeters by one by five. And call this my tooth bar. And just put this on top of that. And it looks like this right here. And use the line key to make it uh, straight and make the uh, bar and that the uh, same height. And you can change the color of these things also. Uh, there's a color palette on there. You just hit the color thing and you can change it to a different color if you want. But anyway, so all you do is this, and this is a uh, uh, 12 tooth gear. So it's 30 degrees increments. So I just take this, highlight it, rotate it 30 degrees, do the duplicate repeat command until I go all the way around. Next. And here's, here's a partially done right here. You can see there's one, two, three, four of those. And then when you hit the group command, it, you, get, you do it all, and it looks like this. And there's your gear with all the straight teeth on it, 12 teeth. Then the next thing we need is a shaft. So I just grab another cylinder, resize that cylinder <coughs> to the size of the shaft. And that was 13 millimeters by five by five. But they also have to put an axle in it. So you gotta put a hole through that thing. And so you, you grab another cylinder, except this is a translucent cylinder. Um, and what this is, this will make a hole, or uh, if you want. So I just made this the size of the axle, which is two and a half millimeter diameter. And I made it a lot longer than, a, than the actual shaft is needed, because that thing will disappear eventually. So, okay, next. So I take all those pieces. There's a shaft, there's a hole, the shaft, the big gear, and the little gear. And I kind of put them all in the same general area. And then there's a thing, uh, I think I mentioned something about a line. And what that does is, uh, when you hit the line, you get these buttons here. And what it'll do, if you hit a button right here, this will take everything that you've highlighted and move it all together in the horizontal space. And if you hit that one, it'll do the same thing in the other direction. But what I also do, because this is offset, you can't have all these things on the exact same plane, so you take and move this guy up about five millimeters, which is basically the thickness of the uh, this gear, and then you you do the align, and then this is what it comes up to be looking at. So there's the big gear, the little gear is underneath. There's the shaft, and there's the hole. And when you hit the group, it comes up sort of looking like that. Next. So. Once you've got your gear design, and that's the final design, you have to export it so you can go and print it. 
because you can't print it, can't do a 3D printing unless you have a computer aided design object. And so that's what the whole thing about Tinkercad was, is to do this. So you select your design and you just highlight it, click on it. Uh, then there, there's a, on the big page with the you know, word plane and everything, there's a uh, command called export and it's in the upper right hand side right there of the, uh, of the uh, window. And then when you do that, you, there's a, a, a page will come up which has the uh, types of files that you want. And you want an SDL file, and that's right here, or there's an object file. Either one will probably work. I use SDL, that's a type of file that's compatible with 3D printing. And when you click on that, it will take you back to uh, download your design in that, with that file. And that download icon is a, a little, has a little arrow pointing down and it's, it's, this is the same one, but it's in the upper right hand corner of that window. And when you hit uh, the download, you go back, you get come up with a new window that says save as. In other words, you can give it a name. And so on the, you just hit the save as, put it in your file name. It could be the same thing that you're working on, or if you give it a new name, it doesn't make any difference. But that name, it comes up in blue on the bottom of the window. And when you hit save, that file name, We'll just send that file to you, basically your downloads file on your computer. And that's the file that you need for 3D printing. And you can take that file and load it onto a, uh, a memory card or whatever, flash card, which you can plug into your 3D printer. Next. And here's a printer that I used. Uh, this one is made by Anycubic, that's the name of the company. Uh, no backup. Um, it's a resin printer. There are a couple types of uh, printers. One printer type of printer uses filament. You know, it just winds off a spool, and it uh, and you print runs through a, a nozzle and it prints. This printer has puts resin in the vat down here, and it uses uh, UV light for uh, for curing. So you just open up your uh, printer, um, or I should say, take that file on your memory card and it plugs it to the side of the uh, printer here. Uh, transfers the uh, information into this machine here and uh, then it says designer for slicing because what you have to do on this thing is it builds up your part in increments like 0.05 millimeters thick so it takes probably hundreds of passes to uh, build up something like that and so that you, what you do is you slice it and I can tell you more about slicing but it's, it's not hard and you uh, tell it uh, how many pieces you want, uh, like the thickness and the types of material you use and that type of thing. Put the memory stick into the printer, pour resin into this tray, and there's a little screen down here that selects the file, and hit print. And you wait a couple hours. <laughs> and it goes away, and it slowly, this uh, yolk plate, they call it, lowers down into the back right here. And uh, every 0.05 millimeters, it'll make like a mass, and the UV light hits it and makes a layer. And it just does that repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Okay, next. And here's some of the objects that I showed you over here that I've designed. Um, there's the gear, uh, the helical teeth on it. I've uh, made a couple signs for some of my buildings. Um, and this is just a, using printer um, letters and you can raise them up and you make a border around it. And then I just take a, a you paint the whole thing and then use black to cover or to make the uh, letter stand out and uh, and you have a sign this is a uh, marker light generic marker light for a locomotive that i made because i needed one for a pacific uh, about some time ago and i did that all this stuff up here is on the challenger there are steam pipes that come from the boiler out to the forward drive system and uh, on the model that i had or locomotive that i had they were made out of uh, wood and copper tubing and it just basically fell apart so I designed these what I call steam pipes uh, for that and this is a close up of one of these things right here. So that's basically what I've done so far. Next. And so in summary, to do 3D printing you need a computer design definition of your part. Without that you can't do anything. And if you don't have any CAD experience, which I didn't have, Tinkercad is a good way to learn to do um, computer aided design and it can be it's relatively easy to learn 
but on occasion it can be kind of frustrating because it's not necessarily totally straightforward, but uh, you can do uh, you can do it with practice, and it'll produce files suitable for printing. It's best to use a PC with a mouse to do this. They say it'll work on a Mac, but I tried it and it don't do it. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> and it's a free web-based. And so when you go back, after you're through with your designing, when you go back next time to the to your, uh, you just type in uh, Tinkercad, www, da, 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 and it uh, will take you to your dashboard where you'll have the existing design wherever you left off. So it automatically saves whatever you did on the web on your account. So you don't have to do any specific saving or anything like that. I'll take you right there. And then there's a whole lot of videos on Google and uh, for a focus uh, group. And then there's a pretty good one that can be explain the uh, various controls, uh, the duplicates and that type of thing at this website right here. There's 22 uh, tips in there, which are pretty good. Then I've got a bunch of personal notes if anybody is interested in anything critical. So, other than that, that's kind of it. Yes. What does that uh, resin printer cost? <laughs> the resin printer, uh, <laughs> I, f I found it initially on Micromark Micro catalog, 460 yeah. some dollars. So I went to any cubic website, which is the manufacturer, I found it for 169. <laughs> 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 Guess what I bought it from. <laughs> Yes. Where did you get the dimensions from that you were going to make? Uh, I've got a uh, micrometer, yeah. basically, and, and I just measured the old gear in millimeters and did a hand drawing with all the dimensions and transferred that onto the uh, onto the work work plane or basically onto these pieces that I showed you. And then to back up to the one other is why did you choose the resin printer as opposed to the filament printer? Uh, John Engel, who is a, I don't know if he's still here, a member of our club, helped me with the very first marker um, that, I, uh, that I did. And he had a lot of problems with the spool and the stuff feeding down, and the plate has to be heated, it has to be level. I mean, there are just so many things that I said I don't want to have anything to do with that. And so I came across to this, what they call SLA, stereolithography printer which uses resin. And that is much easier. It's not 100% easier, but it's a whole lot much easier uh, to use. What's the cost of the resin? Uh, the resin, uh, you get about a, well, let's see, uh, probably about a 16 ounce bottle for about $20, $25. And, and I've used, of everything I've used here, I've used one bottle of resin so far. Is this the printer they showed doing the Eiffel Tower? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you look in the Micromark catalog, they'll have a picture of a Eiffel Tower. And it was printed on this printer. And this printer is a relatively small. I mean, it prints, this bed size is like three by four by six inches. So you have to design something, you know, within those confines. You can buy other printers from any cubic, which have larger beds, so you can make larger pro uh, objects also. So I just made took the small one. Yeah. So I know when uh, when you do a filament print, uh, you have to be careful of uh, the orientation of when it's printing. You might need supports under it. Is it the same thing with the resin printer? Yes. Okay. And uh, the part of the slicing program that you use, uh, it'll automatically put supports. Like if you have a big flat area sitting with no support underneath it, like maybe like a tree, for example, you got the trunk and all the branches. Uh, it'll, it'll put supports underneath, like where the branches will go, just so it has something to hold you, hold them up when it's printing. Yeah. And then you just cut those things off later. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. You said that it's cured with ultraviolet, correct? Correct. Now, is that, can you use it right away? Does it cure it? Okay. Uh, what, after you, you let yeah. it sit for a while. After you print it, uh, I put it in the, the, you say you should clean it. And I put it in the alcohol bath, and I use denatured alcohol. 
and uh, you you clean off the because the resin kind of hanging on you know it's it's a little bit slurpier liquid uh, on the uh, solid piece and it just cleans that stuff off and then you let that air dry and then I put it and then I've got I bought another machine from any cubic it's a called the washer wash cure machine that was about a hundred and fifty dollars and what that is that has a back on it with you can put out the hull in and it turns on and it can spins it spins everything around in the inside and so that's what I use for cleaning my parts and then you take that back off and it just there's a uh, disc on the bottom where you can set your clean dry and cleaned part and you and you uh, switch it from wash to cure and that has it has a uh, a set of lights UV lights at about maybe 10 inches tall, a whole bunch of lights. And that, they're UV lights. And you just put your part on that little disc, put the top back on, hit the button, let it sit there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That, that's the UV light that will cure the resin. Thank you. Or you could just let the part sit out the sunshine for a couple days. <laughs> and it'll work, it'll, it'll work that way also. Wow. Yeah. Well, if you had a 3D scanner, <laughs> which would convert whatever that shape is into into a uh, into a file, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not. Sh I don't know if there's any scanners that are cheap and are really good enough to reproduce a part, a 3D part, with, and then produce a file. Then, if you could produce a file, yeah, you put it in the printer and they you print it. Sure. And there's a lot of designs out on the internet. Um, that you can go after and download the uh, files. I was thinking about people. Uh, there's lots of people out there also. Yeah. But they're usually these ghoulish type <laughs> weird, <laughs> weird things out there. <laughs> but yes, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff files out there that you could download for free. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right. I could use one of those Challenger steam pipes, by the way. Okay. Thanks, Norm. That was good. Um, That's great. Everybody's going to go out and get a 3D printer now. Yeah. Or just hire Norm. Or just hire Norm. Yeah, don't go to like Michael Mark. Go to the manufacturer. Yeah, I, I got one. Can we get a screen discount? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Oh, Norm, you got something real quick? Yeah, I just thought about it on these uh, printers, 3D printers. There's a filament and there's this uh, SLA type that I have. On the, the advantage of an SLA type, like, like what I use with the resin, is that you can, you can duplicate or you can print as many objects that you can place on the, on the plate. And it doesn't take any longer to print it because it does it in layers. So you can print multiple objects all at one time, as opposed to a filament printer, which lays down, has a nozzle, and prints only one object at a time. You're also better for better details. And the yeah. better detail. And you can adjust how thick the, or thin the uh, layers are on this uh, layered printer, SLA printer. You can get way down to like 0.02 millimeters. All it does is double or triple your time to paint. That's all. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, what's a day or two? Okay, let's take about 15 minutes and uh, get them me on time so we can have a good good day. Uh, so we're going to start out with uh, uh, Norm.